Greetings ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. In this video I'm gonna share with you my excitement about getting this new lace that I have. Of course it's new only to me because it's a hundred years old machine. That 1600 pounds of goodness came with all this good stuff here. Few extra chuck keys, a chuck faceplate protecting dummy, a stop with micro adjustment, a thread protector for the main uh, headstock shaft, few taper adapters, also two sets of machinable blank jaws for the chuck, two sets of already machined uh, blanks, they go on a chuck like this. Then we have a tool post with few stuff that I'm not sure what they are for few cutter holders, one for left side, the other one for right side, and then one reversible. Then we have some steel pancakes. Why there are three and what they are for, I'm not entirely sure. Jaws for the six jaw center chuck. I recall from my distant childhood these being a pain in the rear to install back on the chuck, but we'll see about that. What else we have here? This, I think, is called a collet bar or a draw bar for the 5C collet. These are good to use in a production environment or when lots of repetitive parts are being produced. Some gears, 40, 45, and 50 teeth. Some, I think these are crating studs, probably not even from this lathe. Okay, we got some cast wrench, this one's for the tail stock, and this one is for the carriage lock. This wrench will also work on the tool post. Some tail stock accessories like these drill chucks, large life center, dead center, and a smaller life center, which I just bought recently. Some miscellaneous stuff like drill chuck keys and some bolts and a switch, as well as more pancakes that I will use for the machine feet. One more carriage stopper with precision adjustment. You already saw the six jaw chuck. Uh, we got one inch boring bar with a bracket and an inch and a half boring bar with the eccentric adapter attached to it that will fit straight inside that bracket. And lastly, we have the face plate. There was no steady rest or follow rest included with the lathe. So the boring bar bracket will be attached to the compound slide somehow like this. We'll figure it out later. At this moment I'm only able to visually inspect the machine. Uh, everything seemed to work on it. The directional switch is switching and gears are turning. It does look and sound like it has seen a better days though. It is missing a gearbox feed rate chart and some other plate, but it's nothing that couldn't be fixed or replaced. What concerns me more now are the bedways. When I was looking at the machine before I bought it, I failed to pay close attention to the wear on the bedways and I think it's gonna turn into big project for me. The missing felt w wiper or sweep, whatever you call it, probably contributed to this wear significantly. There are also a couple of missing ball oilers which also didn't help with the problem. The backside uh, bedways are worn significantly less than the front ones. The cross slide shows some rust and a little bit of a play in a feed screw. The carriage movement can be described as dragging, not sliding on the bedways. Not surprisingly, the tailstock movement feels much better. The feed screw looks very good. And this is the machine with a serial number of 16,000. It's an anniversary machine. Gears appear to be in a fairly good shape. The cast iron cabinet stand adds a significant portion of the machine weight 
and inside it we find some pulleys and a belt engaging mechanism which appears to be not working at this moment. Underneath it we'll find a motor which is a three-phase motor so we will need some sort of converter for that. After I cleaned it up a little bit I was able to see more of the wear of the bedways and I am scared and excited for this project. But first thing first and before we do anything else we need to set the machine to level. And for that I'm gonna use these pancakes and the threaded rod and a few nuts and washers. In order to do that I need to chop my threaded rod into 4 inch long pieces. Don't forget to wear safety glasses while working with power equipment. One end of the threaded rods will be ground into comb shape to fit inside these pads or pancakes, whatever you like to call them. And both ends will be chamfered ground for easier not starting. We're gonna start with what's easier and uh, start with the lighter end of the machine and assemble our leveling legs on the spot. We will try and not forget about the fender washer and then we'll start putting everything together with the jam nut going on top of our assembly. We will repeat last few steps for the other side and then gently lower the machine. We will make sure that our threaded rods fall right in the center of our metal pads. We will repeat the same process for the heavier end of the machine, except we're gonna use different means to lift it up. Because of the geometry of the casting, the fender washer did not fit on the upper portion of the leveling legs. You can see how cherry picker legs deflect and you can imagine just how heavy this machine is. And trust me, I had a blast moving it in the garage. Then we're gonna adjust nuts to get our machine to level up. This is a very tedious process and requires a lot of going back and forth from one leg to another trying to adjust it and even a tenth of a turn even less than that makes a big difference on this level. This is the precision machinist level that is able to detect a half of thousands of an inch per 10 inch span. And finally after about 40 minutes of crawling on my knees and adjusting one leg at a time a little bit at a time I was able to achieve this level of precision, which I say is not bad at all. After adjustments, the difference between the longest and the shortest leg of the machine was about 2 inches. Now ready for some more fun? Like I mentioned earlier, this is a three-phase motor on the machine. And in order for me to be able to use it, I bought this VFD, Variable Frequency Drive, and oh boy, I tell you, these things are sweet. Now, don't mind the temporary setup. I just did it to test if it's working. The VFD takes a single phase as an input. And then by rapidly switching on and off all three output pins, it creates an average value of a three-phase current. And the best part about all this is that we can change the rate of switching on and off. And by doing that, we change the output frequency, which is the superior way to control the speed of the motor. Which brings all kinds of benefits, like alleviating the starting current of the motor, which is about 5 to 7 times greater than the normal running current. Also, the ability to maintain a constant torque of the motor, even on a lower speed. Prior to starting the motor, I had to change settings of the VFD to have the maximum frequency output at 60 Hz because my motor is the regular 60 Hz motor. Usually VFDs can supply up to 400, sometimes 500 Hz on the output side. And it is suitable for higher speed motor, but those are specially designed motors that run on that such high frequency. As you can see, the belt engagement mechanism is working now because I have adjusted it. Everything looks like it's working normally and 
we should be at about 418 RPM if you trust this table. Now let's try and run it with gears engaged. I know I probably shouldn't be running this machine with dry gears with no oil, no cleaning. I just I'm too excited, I can't wait. You can hear the noise level is much higher than it was when the machine was running without the gears engaged. Once I get my precision dial indicators, I will be able to measure the wear on the bedways. But it looks to me just eyeballing, it's about 10 to 15 thousandths of the wear in the worst part of the bedways. And I'm not sure if that even possible to scrape that much of metal off the bedways. Also, these are uh, hardened bedways, so it might not go too well for me as far as scraping him. Maybe with some extra elbow grease I will be able to do it. But one thing is for sure, I am not paying a few thousand dollars to get them ground. Now we see that the carriage feeder gearbox appears to be working fine. It engages firmly and drives it nicely. Also we test the cross slide automatic feeder with a friction clutch. I also will be making an external control box for the VFD so that I don't have to run back and forth to turn it on and off and that control box will have the motor speed adjustment. If you watch this video to this point, I thank you for your patience and ask you kindly subscribe, maybe hit the like button and share this video with your friends and stay tuned for this and many other projects.